Income inequality is growing in the United States at an alarming rate. The top 1% now own more of this nation's wealth than the bottom 90% combined. Senator Sanders. When you introduced your wealth tax, which would tax the assets of the wealthiest Americans, you said, quoting you, Senator, billionaires should not exist. Is the goal of your plan to tax billionaires out of existence? When you have a half a million Americans sleeping out on the street today, when you have 87 people, 87 million people uninsured or underinsured, when you got hundreds of thousands of kids who cannot afford to go to college, and millions struggling with the oppressive burden of student debt. And then you also have three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of American society. That is a moral and economic outrage. And the truth is we cannot afford to continue this level of income and wealth inequality, and we cannot afford a billionaire class whose greed and corruption has been at war with the working families of this country for 45 years. So if you're asking me, do I think we should demand that the wealthy start paying the wealthiest, top one-tenth of one percent, start paying their fair share of taxes so we can create a nation and a government that works for all of us? Yes, that's exactly what I believe. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Steyer. You are the lone billionaire on this stage. Oh. What's your plan for closing the income gap? Well, first of all, let me say this. Senator Sanders is right. There have been 40 years where corporations have bought this government, and those 40 years have meant a 40-year attack on the rights of working people and specifically on organized labor. And the results are as shameful as Senator Sanders says both in terms of assets and in terms of income. It's absolutely wrong, it's absolutely undemocratic and unfair. I was one of the first people on this stage to propose a wealth tax. I would undo every Republican tax cut for rich people and major corporations. But there's something else going on here that is absolutely shameful, and that's the way the money gets split up in terms of earnings. As a result of taking away the rights of working people in organized labor, People haven't had a raise. 90% of Americans have not had a raise for 40 years. If you took the minimum wage from 1980 and just adjusted it for inflation, you get 11 bucks. It's seven and a quarter. If you included the productivity gains of American workers, it'd be over 20 bucks. There's something wrong here, and that is that the corporations have bought our government. Our government has failed. That's why I'm running for president because we're not gonna get any of the policies that everybody on this stage wants. Health care, education, Green New Deal, Thank or you, a living Mr. wage, Steyer. unless we break the power of these corporations. Thank you, Mr. Steyer. Vice President Biden, you have warned against demonizing rich people. Do you believe that Senator Sanders and Senator Warren's wealth tax plans do that? No, look, I, uh, demonizing wealth people, what I talked about is how you get things done. And the way to get things done is take a look at the tax code right now. The idea, we have to start rewarding work, not just wealth. I would eliminate the capital gains tax. That, and I would, I would raise the capital gains tax to the highest rate of 39.5%. I would double it. Because guess what? Why in God's name should someone who's clipping coupons in the stock market make, in fact, pay a lower tax rate than someone who, in fact, is, uh, like I said, the, a school teacher and a firefighter? It's ridiculous, and they pay a lower tax. Secondly, the idea that we, in fact, engage in this notion that there are one point, there's one trillion, six hundred forty billion dollars in tax loopholes. You can't justify a minimum six hundred billion dollars of that. We could eliminate it all. I could go into detail had I the time. Secondly, the th I mean, thirdly, what we need to do is we need to go out and make it clear to the American people that we are going to. We are going to raise taxes on the wealthy. We're going to reduce tax burdens on those who are not. And this is one of the reasons why these debates are kind of crazy, because everybody tries to squeeze everything into every answer that is given. The fact is, everybody's right about the fact that the fourth industrial revolution is costing jobs. It is. The fact is also corporate greed. If they're going back and not investing in their employees, they're reinvesting and buying back their stock. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. See, Thank you, Mr. Vice thing. President. S 
Senator Warren, your response. So I think this is about our values as a country. Show me your budget, show me your tax plans, and we'll know what your values are. And right now in America, the top one-tenth of one percent have so much wealth. Understand this, that if we put a two-cent tax on their 50 millionth and first dollar, and on every dollar after that, we would have enough money to provide universal child care for every baby in this country, age zero to five. Universal pre-K for every child. Raise the wages of every child care worker and preschool teacher in America. Provide for universal tuition-free college. Put $50 billion into historically black colleges and universities. Thank and you, cancel, Senator Warren. No, let me finish, please. And cancel student loan debt for 95% of the people who have it. My question is not why do Bernie and I support a wealth tax, it's why is it does everyone else on this stage think it is more important to protect billionaires than it is to invest in an entire generation of Americans? Thank you, Senator Warren. No one Mayor is supporting Buttigieg. billionaires. Mayor Buttigieg, your response. I'm all for a wealth tax. I'm all for just about everything that was just mentioned in these answers. Let me tell you, though, how this looks from the industrial Midwest where I live. Washington politicians, congressmen and senators, saying all the right things, offering the most elegant policy prescriptions, and nothing changes. I didn't even realize it was unusual to have empty factories that I would see out the windows of my dad's Chevy Cavalier when he drove me to school. I didn't know that was in every city until I went away to college. Now, I drive my own Chevy, it's a Chevy Cruze. Used to be built right in Lordstown, which is now one more symbol of the broken promises that this president has made to workers. But why did workers take a chance on this president in the first place? It's because it felt like nobody was willing to actually do anything. And while he's unquestionably made it dramatically worse, this is time to realize that we're paying attention to the wrong things. We're paying attention Thank you, to who sounded Thank better you, on a Judge. debate stage or a committee Klobuchar. here. Senator Klobuchar, versus Klobuchar. It's actually will a wealth well tax, well 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 tax work? Um, it could work. I am open to it. But I want to give a reality check here to Elizabeth because no one on this stage wants to protect billionaires. Not even the billionaire wants to protect billionaires. Uh, we just have different approaches. Your idea is not the only idea. And when I look at this, I think about Donald Trump, the guy that after that uh, tax bill passed, went to Mar-a-Lago, got together with his cronies and said, guess what? You guys all got a lot richer. That was the one time in his presidency he told the truth. So we have different ways. I would repeal significant portions of that tax bill that helped the rich, including what he did with the corporate tax rate, including what he did on international taxation. You add it all up, you got a lot of money that one helps pay for that child care, protects that dignity of work, make sure we have decent retirement, and make sure that our kids can go to Thank good you. schools. Sen it is not one Thank idea you, that rules Klobuchar. here. Senator Warren, please respond. So understand, taxing income is not going to get you where you need to be the way taxing wealth does. That the rich are not like you and me. The really, really billionaires are making their money off their accumulated wealth, and it just keeps growing. We need a wealth tax in order to make investments in the next generation. Look, I understand that this is hard, but I think as Democrats, we are going to succeed when we dream big and fight hard, not when we dream small and quit before we get started. Oh, I would like to respond to that. Senator Klobuchar, respond, you know, please. I, I think simply because you have different ideas doesn't mean you're fighting for regular people. I wouldn't even be up on this stage if it wasn't for unions and the dignity of work. If my grandpa didn't have unions protecting him in those mines, he wouldn't have survived. If my mom didn't have unions that as a teacher, she wouldn't have been able to make the wages she made when my parents got divorced. So just because we have different ideas and get to the same place in terms of beating Donald Trump and taking this on, we are in Ohio. We can win Ohio in the presidency, but only if we unite, if we unite around a ideals and don't go fighting against each other and instead take the fight Thank to you, him. Thank you, Senator. Senator Harris, you want to give working families a tax credit of up to $6,000 a year to help close the income gap. Right. Is that a better solution than a wealth tax? 
Well, here's how I think about it. Um, when I was growing up, um, my mother raised my sister and me. We would often come home from school before she came home from work. She'd come home, she'd cook dinner, and um, at some point we'd go to bed, and she'd sit up at the kitchen table trying to figure out how to make it all work. And when I think about where we are right now in 2020, I do believe justice is on the ballot. It's on the ballot in terms of impeachment. It's on the ballot in terms of economic justice, health justice, and so many other issues. So when I think about this issue, I'm thinking about that dad who tonight is going to be sitting at his kitchen table after everyone's gone to sleep and sitting there with his cup of tea or coffee trying to figure out how it's going to make how he's going to make it work and he's probably sitting there deciding that on that minimum wage job that does not pay enough for him to meet the bills at the end of the month he's going to have to start driving an uber and what does that mean that means that with those two jobs he's going to miss his kids soccer games that's the reality for americans today which is why yes when i pass when i get elected and and pass this bill which will give the American family who makes less than $100,000 a year a tax credit of up to $6,000 a year that they can take home at up to $500 a month, that's going to make a real difference in that man's life. And don't tell him that's not a big Thank deal you, when Senator. he's trying to get through the end of the month. Mr. Yang, your response. Would you oppose a wealth tax? Senator Warren is 100% right that we're in the midst of the most extreme winner-take-all economy in history. And a wealth tax makes a lot of sense in principle. The problem is that it's been tried in Germany, France, Denmark, Sweden, and all those countries ended up repealing it because it had massive implementation problems and did not generate the revenue that they'd projected. If we can't learn from the failed experiences of other countries, what can we learn from? We should not be looking to other countries' uh, mistakes. Instead, we should look at what Germany, France, Denmark, and Sweden still have, which is a value-added tax. If we give the American people a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every robot truck mile, every Facebook ad, we can generate hundreds of billions of dollars and then put it into our hands because we know best how to use it. Thank you. Thank you. Congressman O'Rourke, do you think a wealth tax is the best way to address income inequality? Your response? I think it's part of the solution, but I think we need to be focused on lifting people up. And sometimes I think that Senator Warren is, is more focused on being punitive or, or pitting some part of the country against the other. Um, instead of lifting people up and making sure that this country comes together around those solutions. I think of a woman that I met in Las Vegas, Nevada. She's working four jobs, raising her child with disabilities. And any American with disabilities knows just how hard it is to make it and get by in this country already. Um, some of those jobs working for some of these corporations, she wants to know how we are going to help her, how we're gonna make sure that her child has the care that she needs, that we strengthen protections for those with disabilities, that she just has to work one job because it pays a living wage. And Senator Warren said, show me your budget, show me your tax plan, and you'll show me your values. She has yet to describe her tax plan and whether or not that person I met would see a tax increase. Under my administration, if you make less than $250,000 a year as a family, you will not see a tax increase. That Thank family you, needs to know that. Let me say I want to give Senator Warren a chance to respond. So um, I'm really shocked at the notion that anyone thinks I'm punitive. Uh, look, I don't have a beef with billionaires. My problem is you made a fortune in America. You had a great idea. You got out there and worked for it. Good for you. But you built that fortune in America. I guarantee you built it in part using workers all of us help pay to educate. You built it in part getting your goods to market on roads and bridges all of us help pay for. You built it at least in part protected by police and firefighters all of us help pay the salaries for. And all I'm saying is, you make it to the top, the top one-tenth of one percent, then pitch in two cents so every other kid in America has a chance to Senator, make it. Senator, thank you. That's Secretary Castro, about. your response? I just want to make sure that we're lifting up those families but, who are working and need help through an expanded earned income and, tax credit or is, child ahead, tax credit, which ahead, we will Senator. do in my administration. That is the point. This is universal child care for every baby in this country. Early educational opportunities for every child. Universal pre-K, no matter where you live, for every three-year-old and four-year-old. In addition to that, will they see the a tax wages, increase? No, raising the wages of every 
child care worker and preschool teacher in this country. This is about universal college, about investment in our HBCUs, about making sure that we get rid of the student loan debt burden. Thank that you, is Senator. Thank you, Senator. Secretary Castro, I want to get Secretary Castro in here, please, Congressman. Thanks Go ahead, lot, Secretary. Uh, Aaron. And you see that everybody has their own plans. And let me just say that, that the way that I view this is born out of my own experience. I grew up, like I bet a lot of folks in this room grew up, and folks that are watching on TV, uh, I grew up with my twin brother, Joaquin, uh, in a single parent household where my mom was working hard to support us and also her mom, my grandmother. And we knew what it was like uh, to wonder whether we were gonna be able to pay the rent at the first of the month, or sometimes have the electricity turned off. And when I was a kid, to look at the grocery list that seemed to get shorter and shorter. And that's what's happening to a lot of families these days. I was in Las Vegas a few months ago, and I visited people who are homeless, who are living in storm drainage tunnels under the Las Vegas Strip, in the shadow of hotels and casinos that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, where people from around the world are spending so much money on vacations. We can do better than that. I believe that a wealth inequality tax, as I've proposed, is part of the answer, but also I've proposed an inheritance tax, raising the top marginal Thank tax you, rate, Secretary. and investing Thank in things like you, universal Secretary. child care Senator and Booker, affordable please housing. Respond. Well, first of all, I just want to respond by, you know, we've got one shot to make Donald Trump a one-term president. Mm -hmm. And how we talk about each other in this debate actually really matters. I, I've had the privilege of working with or being friends with everybody on this stage and tearing each other down because we have a different plan to me is unacceptable. I have seen this script before. It didn't work in 2016 and it will be disaster for us in 2020. And so I, I have a different plan than uh, Elizabeth Warren. I have a different plan than many people on this stage. And it involves, again, fair taxes for the richest. We have a lot of work to do there, but we've had 20 years of presidential debates, and we have never talked about the violence in America of child poverty. We have got to begin to talk more eloquently and more persuasively and urgently about doing the things, not just to make sure fair taxes are paid by people on the top, but that we deal with the moral obscenity of having the highest levels of child poverty in the industrial world. My plan will focus on that, and these are some of the issues we should be talking about. Not defining ourselves just by what we're against, but we need to win this election by talking about who and what we are for. Thank you, Senator Booker. We've got to take a quick break. Uh, we've got to take a quick break right now. The CNN New York Times debate.